So we are continuing our winter weather week this week. More to talk about, and this is a topic I know you're familiar oh, with. Oh, I love this one. The Aurora Borealis, also known as the Northern Lights, made headlines across our area several times earlier this year. In fact, even a couple of nights ago, we had a display. Now signs are pointing to this winter, potentially seeing a boom in even more Aurora sightings. Liam Healy sat down with a NASA astrophysicist to dig further into why this phenomenon might be making another big return. As the sun nears the peak of its 11-year cycle in conjunction with the long winter nights, our chances of seeing the aurora are on the rise. According to Dr. Dean Pencel from NASA, this could be our best chance in decades to see it. So we've been below average for the last three cycles now. This time it appears it has headed back up and we should see increased activity over the next few solar cycles. How active a solar cycle is, is determined by the number of sunspots in the sun. These are high energy areas on the sun's surface, which can spew out highly charged particles in a number of different ways. It's what erupts from these that can cause the aurora here on Earth. The more sunspots there are, that means that there's, there's more filaments, which are these big, tall, towering arches of material that are suspended above this, the surface. And th those regions tend to have more flares and they also tend to have these coronal mass ejections where one of those filaments is thrown off of the sun. While the flares mentioned can sometimes cause the aurora, to get a long-lasting show in the northern sky, you want to see a coronal mass ejection. When these coronal mass ejections take one of these filaments and pull that off of the surface of the sun and throw that into, the, into space, as it goes by, the magnetic field that's there interacts with our magnetic field and can cause long-lasting aurora. With an increasing amount of sunspots, the chance of a coronal mass ejection or even a flare headed towards Earth is higher than normal at the peak of the solar cycle. Combined with our longer nights, the windows for these to arrive and kick the aurora up is just that much greater. Reporting, Liam Healy, News 8. Thanks for that, Liam. And while the auroras that result from these events are pretty nice to look at, we've seen the photos here from our own team. It is important to remember these space weather events that they are. If they're sufficiently large, they can cause issues with radio GPS satellites and on the electrical grid as well. Well, and that is one of the big reasons why agencies like NASA are always tracking them. And this is going to be another story we'll do, I'm sure, in time here, an event <laughs> called the Carrington event, which was a big old solar flare. The amount of damage that will do to a lot of things here nowadays yeah. it's a thing worth watching just not things that you think about mm -mm. when you know if you're lucky enough to yep. catch these in real time all right